Mr. McCoy back with part two of Mystery of the Egyptian Mummy. As you recall, Ahmed J had told Zet and Cap to move along, but we, this is official business, the Med J said. Keep walking. Come on, Cat said. Let's go. We should tell him about last night. We should tell him that we saw the mummy. It might be helpful, Zet hissed. Plus, he wouldn't mind getting in a few questions of his own. No, we have customers waiting. You promised mother. Besides, we can't afford to set tongues wagging again for opening late. This time the market owner will kick us out for sure. And then we'll be in serious trouble. You know we can't afford to lose our stall. She was right. He groaned out loud. Then he took off at a run, sandals slapping the hot earth. Last one there is a rotten goose egg, he shouted. He knew without glancing back that she was rolling her eyes. Still, she got there nearly as fast as he did. Only because you had a head start, she panted, hands on both knees. Together they opened the stall's tent doors and lifted protective sheets from their wares. Inside, dishes of every size gleamed in the early light. There were bowls and cooking pots, vases and decorative pottery. The swish of curtains sent up puffs of dust as Zet tied them back. From all around, other vendor stalls clattered to life. Spicy smells rose from a food takeaway nearby. Across the way, spices of every color were mounded in baskets. Fruits and vegetables shone brightly. Goats bleated and fishmongers laid out their catches. Shoppers filtered in, poking and prodding and haggling. Pots for sale, Zet shouted, adding to the den. Clay pots, come and get your pots. Nothing could banish the mummy from his thoughts. The mummy and the strange chant and the way he pointed directly at their door. At him. Is it just me or are the people avoiding us? Kat said. It was true. To their dismay, not a single person came to buy their wares all morning. At midday, they sat in the shade behind stacks of pottery to eat lunch. Zet shoveled chickpea salad into his mouth, worried or not. Nothing ever dampened his appetite. People are definitely avoiding us. Why, Kat said, this is awful. Even with the WAG festival coming, I'm not expecting a rush on fancy plates. It's not that sort of event, but we've never gone a single morning without selling a few cooking pots. They break all the time, water jugs to do too, and, and clay bread loaf pans. What's going on? I don't know. Could it have to do, could it have anything to do with the mummy? Kat's forehead wrinkled under her dark banks. Wait, her face paled. Do you think the mummy actually cursed us? Oh, by the gods, I knew it was Aziza. I, I just knew it. Nah, he muttered. He tried to push all thoughts of Pharaoh's cousin, bitter, vengeful Aziza, from his mind. It's probably just a coincidence. We did nothing to him. That whole business wasn't our fault. Look, forget I said anything. Let's get back to work. Lunch over, they returned to the front of the tent. As soon as they had, Kat grabbed Zet's arm and her fingers dug in hard. Ow, Zet said. Look, she pointed, at that stack of plates. Zet did as she said, seeing the pile of pottery that hadn't been there earlier. Someone's returned all of their dinnerware, she gasped. Zet stared in shock. Strange, they paid for them. Don't they want them anymore? As if in answer, a frantic-looking couple scuttled up with armloads of pottery. The man wore his wig low to cover his eyes. The woman hid her face behind a clay jug. She bought that jug only last week. Zet remembered selling it to her. You're bringing those back? Zet asked, baffled. Is something wrong? They made no reply. Instead, they set the pottery down and scurried off. Wait, Zet called after them. Let me give you some Deben coins. The couple ignored his calls. Zet sat heavily on an upside-down urn. He grabbed his head in both hands. I have a bad feeling about this, Kat said. I was right, we are cursed and everyone knows. We're not cursed, Zet tried to insist. At that moment, a woman inched up to the tent. She crouched down to abandon a beautiful serving desk. Before she got away, Kat caught the woman by her shawl. Please, Kat begged, don't leave. I must, let go of me. At least tell me why you're returning that dish, Cat begged. The woman's face flushed scarlet. My husband says it's unsafe to keep your platter in our house. 
Why? Because of Aziza. She tried to disentangle her shawl from Cat's fingers. Cat was nearly in tears. She held the woman fast. But what does Aziza have to do with our platter? Don't play coy. We both know Aziza never forgave you for that time your brother tripped him in this very stall and broke his nose on that jug. My brother didn't trip him. It was an accident. Uh, why does no one believe that it was an accident? Aziza was very particular about his looks. He used to be a handsome man, but after that, with everyone calling him Jug Nose? I never called him Jug Nose, Kat said. Maybe not but the rest of Thebes did. Is it any wonder he's come back from the dead to curse you? I'm very sorry about his nose, Cat said earnestly, but it was an accident. As to that, I can't say, the woman sniffed. My lady, Zet said, there's no reason to return your platter. Trust me, we're not cursed, she scoffed. Aziza was haunting your doorstep last night with Anubis snarling god of the underworld on his heels, and I have no intention of crossing either of them. The woman yanked her shawl free from Cat's hand. But that doesn't make sense, Zet protested. Aziza can't return from the dead. That's not how it works. The woman hurried off. Wait, Zet called after her. Let us at least refund your platter. If they had to refund everyone's returns, they'd soon be poor. But what choice did they have? It was the right thing to do. The woman ignored him and disappeared into the crowd. Cat moaned. Oh, Zet, we're in huge trouble. This makes no sense, Zet said. Aziza either made it to the underworld or the gods destroyed him at his judgment trial. He couldn't return to haunt us. No one can. Cat looked at Zet. I don't know. He set his jaw. I'm right and you know it, so let's hide away these returns. Because when this blows over, everyone's going to want their stuff back. Cat blinked away tears. We're cursed, Zet. Curses don't blow over. Zed ignored weary stares from market goers. This is a mystery, he insisted, and like any mystery, it can be solved. He picked up the abandoned platter. Hey, don't worry, we'll figure it out. Now, do you see why I need to investigate? Her tears turned to annoyance. Her, she rubbed her face and finally blew out a sigh. All right, yes, you win. We investigate, together. So, what would be the first step for this investigation? What are Zet and Kat going to do first? Share what you think with your fellow listener. For two days, Zet and Kat scoured their street for clues. They tried to question the neighbors, but all ran away shouting that they didn't want Aziza cursing them too. At night, the siblings slept in shifts, waiting in vain for the mummy's return. The mummy hadn't paid a second visit. The pottery returns kept piling up though, and Apu kept crying and pointing out the front window like he was being haunted. Today, the market was closed. Zed and Kat were meeting up with their two best friends. Hui, whom they'd known since birth, was a joker who loved getting into trouble. But he was also a highly skilled jeweler's apprentice who now worked in the royal foundry. Princess Meritman uh, had become a fast friend. She loved sneaking out of the palace and pretending she was a normal kid. Still, caution forced her to wear a cloak that shadowed her face. Maybe together, they could come up with answers. All four friends were gathered on a small river raft. Zet stood with both feet planted and shoved his bamboo pole into the Nile's rushing waters. Carefully, he guided them around a rock. Hui jabbed a fishing net into the water and came up empty. Ibis birds floated alongside, white feathers gleaming. Cat kicked her feet in the current as she chatted earnestly with Princess Merchman, or Merritt as she liked to be called. Zet was working hard to keep the raft straight, but found it hard to concentrate. He too was worried. Huey lunged with the net. Ah, missed one, he cried. Uh-huh, Zet agreed in a flat voice. Hey, Merritt, you don't believe we're cursed, do you? If anyone knew about curses, mummies, and burial secrets, Merritt would. She was Pharaoh's daughter, after all. She scrunched her eyes in thought. We're in real trouble. Cat said, if people keep returning their pottery, we'll be ruined. I'm so sorry. This is terrible, Merritt said. The raft flew downstream with the current. Zet said, well, I don't believe the mummy was Aziza. There's no way he's come back from the dead, not after facing the goddess Matt at his judgment trial. You know what? I bet he used a scarab spell. 
so that his black heart weighed less than Matt's feather of truth. It's the only way grumpy old Jugnose could make it into the great beyond. Set, Cat hissed. Don't call him that, Huey said. Maybe he didn't find it to the great beyond. In a spooky voice, he added, Maybe Mott's tossed his rotten heart to the Emmet, devourer of the dead. They say it has the legs of a hippo, the front paws of a lion, and the head of a crocodile. And when you fail the judgment test, it snatches your heart, chews it up, and swallows it. Poof, it's all over. No afterlife for you. I bet that's what happened to Aziza. Cat made a face. Gruesome. Huey waggled his brows at her. Really? Are you scared? She crossed her arms. Of course I'm not scared. I don't have a wicked heart, not like some people I know. Huey looked wildly offended. What's that supposed to mean? Zet rolled his eyes. Merritt snickered, but Huey had a point. Either way, whether he passed the test or if Amit finished him off, Zet said, he couldn't be haunting us. True, Huey rubbed his shaved scalp. Right, Merritt, Zet said. For the second time that morning, she simply squinted away at some sunny spot downriver. Water lapped at the raft's edges. Zet pushed off the bottom again with the paddle. He stayed close to shore, keeping an eye out for dangers like crocodiles and hippos. Right, Merritt, Zet prompted. She pulled her knees up and turned to face them. I shouldn't tell you this because it's secret knowledge. Huey sat forward, his eyes wide. Really? Now you have to. She trailed her feet in the water in silence. Finally, she said, I'm only speaking of this because I feel you have a right to know. Priests have created certain spells that can be written on tomb walls. They, Huey sat further forward. They what? They awaken the mummy so that he can haunt and kill his enemies. Cat let out a small cry. Shaken, Zet shouted, We weren't Aziza's enemies. Awaken the mummy, Huey cried, dropping his net and scanning the river. What does the spell say? Tell me exactly what it says. Merritt recited it in a low, clear voice, ending with the final awful verse. I shall seize his neck like that of a goose. I shall make him miserable. I shall make him die from hunger and thirst. A spooked silence fell. Cat had turned pale. Zet spoke up. But we didn't do anything to him. It was an accident. Making a face, Huey said, Aziza didn't see it that way. Merritt spoke up. There's another problem. Another problem? Cat asked in a high, worried voice. You said a jackal was guarding the mummy. So Anubis, god of the underworld, has taken his earthly form. That doesn't bode well, I'm afraid. Zet tried to swallow the lump in his throat. If this mummy has returned to the living, it has done so with the blessing of Anubis. If the god of the underworld has appeared in the form of a jackal, Huey got unsteadily to his bare feet as if he could sit still no longer. The raft had drifted into a fast-moving current. It rocked under him as they sped along. So what are you saying? The god of death walks amongst us, Merritt said. People are right to be afraid. Egypt is in danger. We cannot forget that we're at war in the north. The army is the only thing holding back the Hyksos invaders. We need the gods on our side. Zet thought of his father, a soldier on the front lines. His chest tightened. Huey's father was up there fighting too. Merritt's ringed fingers tugged at one another in turn. Their raft had sailed far from the noisy water steps where fishermen unloaded their catches. Here, in a lonely river bend, reeds grew tall along the shore. The dashing current gurgled and slapped the plants. A mud brick wall came into view. It barricaded the right bank. Beyond the wall, city buildings loomed in the sun's glare. The nearest one, the royal treasury, rose higher than the rest. Merritt nodded at the treasury. Wars are expensive. I'm afraid I overheard my father say funds are running low. Without funds, we can't get supplies to our troops. Everyone followed her gaze. If Anubis has come to Thebes, Merritt said, if he's angry, the god of death could plunge us into terrible trouble. Our soldiers are the only thing holding off the invaders. Zet struggled to find his voice. Merritt, you need to stay away from us. We need to turn around. 
If you get cursed because of us, if... Stay away, her eyes flashed. I am a royal daughter. I would never stand down when Egypt's people are in trouble, let alone abandon my best friends. Zet started to argue. The raft slammed into some unmoving object. The force threw Huey flat on his face next to Cat. Huey's hands shot out, and Cat grabbed them. They held on to keep from falling over the edge. The jarring halt sent Zet flying. He shouted in horror as Princess Meritman tumbled off the raft. With an awful splash, Merit hit the water. A hundred things flashed through Zet's mind. Most of all, he was thinking of the hippopotamus, the river's deadliest animal. If its massive jaws didn't crush you, it would drown you underfoot. Merit's eyes met this for one brief awful moment. Then she was sucked beneath the brown, swirling surface. So what do you think they'll do to save her? Share with your fellow listener. And now, more of Mystery of the Egyptian Mummy. Merit, Zet shouted. He jumped in, his feet striking the murky bottom. The Nile rivers rose to his chest. He plunged under, searching desperately for the princess and the silty brown current. Nothing. Merit, Cat shrieked. Suddenly there came a splash as Merit hopped up a dozen paces away. She coughed and sputtered and stood unsteadily in the rushing current. Zet plunged toward her. Crocodiles lurked in shallow places like this. They'd lie in wait with only their eyes and snouts jutting into the air. And they pounced fast. Quick, back on the raft, Zet shouted, pushing her forward. Give us your hands, Cat cried. She and Huey hauled Zet and Merritt back aboard. The four stood dripping and breathing hard. Zet said, we'd better get moving. We're like sitting ducks. He pushed off with the pole. The raft wouldn't budge. What's happening, Cat demanded. Huey reached a cautious hand into the water. We're stuck on a rock. Merritt said, this is odd. I boated here last week in the Royal Barge and the Nile was deep. It shouldn't be shallow. Look at that sandbank. Where did all that sand come from? I don't know, Zet glanced around, feeling uneasy. It was a great responsibility to have Merritt out here. Let's free the raft and get back. I don't like this. None of them did. They exchanged spooked glances. Warily, the four children slid into the water. They shoved hard, but the raft was waterlogged and heavy. The lashings were stuck firm. Movement on the riverbank made Zet turn and look. On shore stood a rough-skinned woman with long hair and narrowed eyes. Tall grasses swayed up to her strong shoulders. She leaned out, holding a fishing net, and threw it onto the water. Hey, Zet called. Hello, my lady. The woman gave him the evil eye and waved the children away. We're stuck, Zet called, ignoring her glares. Can you help us push off? That's when he noticed a small hut partially hidden in the lush overgrowth. The door flew open and a huge man thrust his way outside. His muscular arms held a heavy-looking bucket. An enormous blade gleamed at his waist. He looked sharp and deadly. Here now, growled the man. What's all this shouting? It's those noisy children, the woman made a sour face. Get rid of them. What's the trouble, the man thundered. Zet, Cat, Huey, and Merritt exchanged worried glances. Water surged around their legs. We're stuck on a rock, Zet called back. We need some help. The man set down his bucket. He wiped his hands on his barrel chest and waded into the Nile. This is men's work. Out of my way, girls, he sneered. But then his eyes fastened on Merritt and he studied her face as if trying to place the princess. Cat quickly whispered, pull your hood over your head and we'll find out what happens next as Mystery of the Egyptian Mummy continues. <laughs>